Huh. Oh my god, it's so freaking hot today, it's unbelievable. Good thing I have my good friend with me here, uh, Freddy Frost, who can- who can cool me off on this- on this fine day. Thank you so much, Freddy Frost, and good evening, ladies, lasses, and lasses, and welcome to the league. I do hope you're having an amazing day. One quick thing, how do you say, in your local language, let me know in the comments, how you actually say, well, hello there, is it really hot today, or is it just you? I want to pick up as many as possible. So anyway, today we're going to do something beautiful. We're going to look at r slash frick you, Karen, which is going to be amazing, it's going to be beautiful, and it's going to be so fun. You hear that, Freddy? Yeah, heck yeah, it's going to be good. Enjoy. Mwah. I am losing my mind, but in a good way. One star. I have not eaten here and I was really looking forward to my burger order. I was staying at a nearby hotel with no transportation but too far to walk. When I called, I expected that you most likely didn't deliver, but I was also told you didn't participate in any services such as Uber Eats, Grubhub, etc. Would you consider signing up with any of these? That's the reason I gave this a one star. But next time I'm in town, I hope you have some sort of delivery option. <laughs> Way to frick over a small local business. Oh, you don't have this service that's completely unrelated to what you do? One star even though I never ate here. Thank you, Karen. Next. Today I had to bury my sweet baby girl. Oh my god, this starts up dark. She would have been six years old today. She died last week after contracting the measles she got from an MMR vaccine. That's been a wake-up call for me after being against vaccination my entire life. Wait, wait. After being against vaccination my entire life? Well, that's not a wake-up call. You just held on to the same belief. My very family conned me into vaccinating my baby girl. Oh, okay, I see. I see, okay. And what did it lead to? She died from the very thing the doctors told me protected against. A mother always knows what's best for a child, and no doctor can tell me otherwise. This is not what happened, and you know it. We told you from day one what could happen if Blorp wasn't vaccinated. Instead, she contracted measles like we warned you she would. We told you to seek medical treatment for her. Instead, you tried to cure her with essential oils. When that didn't work, we finally thought you caved when we heard you were taking her to a doctor. But instead, you said you finally got her a vaccine shot. A vaccine shot after she had the measles for three weeks. Vaccines take up the three weeks to start working. I can't stop something that is already happening to you. Blorp didn't die because of the vaccine. Blorp died because you believed some hippie Facebook group of lies and snake oil, instead of a medical doctor, years of training and experience. Blorp, I would hope you get measles, but I know you can because you're vaccinated, so continue to live with the very immunity you denied, your dead child. Oh my god, this is so, it's so dark and so tragic and so sad and so preventable. Somehow that makes it even more sad that it's something that could so easily have been prevented. And the thing is that a vaccine, there is a reason why they tell you, you know, don't go get a vaccine if you have symptoms because your immune system is already working if you have an infection and getting a vaccine can, you know, do things to your body that aren't great. The body should be able to, you know, build up the immune response when you get the vaccine in peace. That's, that's how the whole gist works. So getting a vaccine after you've already had it for weeks is just gonna, you know, further weaken your immune system because you're putting it up to fight and prepare for something additionally. This is so bad. Oh no. Here are all the collection of kids. Which one would you rather have as a grandma here? Uh, let me know. I think I think the, the oldest one to the right looks the most like she could be a sweet grandma type, right? Yeah, I hope so. So here is a lady in her bride's dress. She was not the bride. Oh, <laughs> Way to stir up, like, immense drama and conflict that at your friend's wedding. This is not good. McDonald's. What do you mean you don't accept American dollars? This is a McDonald's. This was in Poland. <laughs> it's like that Karen lady that gets on the bus in China and be like, This, why don't you speak American? It's like, this, it's China. What are you, t what? Time for a little bit of iced tea. Do you want some iced tea there, Freddy Frost? Mm, very nice. Oh, that's so good. Love summer. Mommy, Daddy, I'm in heaven now. Please don't cry to the person who hurt me, though I don't understand why I still forgive you. I pray to everyone to please try. Taking away guns is not how this bad stuff ends. Please remember it was a gun that saved the rest of my friends. That is where this is going? <gasps> <laughs> Be kind to each other in the times that seem so wild to all you grown-ups. The burden is easier if you love Jesus with the heart of a child. Jesus said don't fret on the why and how. He'll be back soon. Jesus said he wants to play with us, so I gotta go by for now. Oh my god, what? I wouldn't even use this poster for toilet paper. <laughs> it's, it's so gross, I wouldn't even use it. To wipe Po! New York Post. Johnny Depp just destroyed his reputation to win a verdict, but man, was it a show. What? That's... <laughs> that's your takeaway? What? <laughs> Karen tells a minority to go back to their country. Native Americans. 
You have no power here, Gandalf the Gay. Ah, absolutely gorgeous. Karens everywhere are just... Mm, it's just fuel for my content farm, isn't it? In the future, when we run out of Karens, when it's like an extinct breed, because, you know, we shame them into, <laughs> into freaking non-existence on the internet. I'm just gonna make up fake accounts and create Karens and just like, oh, look at this Karen post from this account that was created that day by not me. <laughs> Has anyone noticed all the cracks in the sidewalks lately? Do you know who's doing that? I saw some kids in hoodies. It might be them. They had an animal on a leash. I think it might have been a fox. The next day I saw grass growing through the cracks on the sidewalk. Do you think they planted grass seeds on their walk with their fox? I'm going to call the police next time I see anyone in any age in a hoodie or a fox. Officer, teenagers in hoodies with foxes are planting grass. On, on, the, on the sidewalk. <laughs> I would love to hear how that conversation would go. That would be amazing. When a military husband exits his home country for work, leaving his wife behind alone, his wife shouldn't be condemned for having naughty relations with another man. Oh, other men, it's plural. Oh, great. If she becomes pregnant this time, her husband should be held legally responsible to support both his wife and her baby under all circumstances. I don't even know where to begin with this. Like... <laughs> So much for, you know, ah, oh, serving your country, let's, let's legalize your girlfriend cheating on you. <laughs> but also not even that, not only accept the fact that they're cheating, also be like, oh, if you run off and have relations with a complete stranger, you still have to care. What? This is so wild. What is the person smoking that made this up? I kind of want to try it, but I'm also scared. I think people like this probably shouldn't be in relationships to begin with. There is something fundamentally wacky. A woman mauled by cheetahs at Belgium Zoo. That's an intriguing title. At the zoo in northern Belgium, Karen, age 37, was killed by cheetahs in their enclosure. She had adopted one of the cheetahs in the exhibit through the zoo's donation program. It is believed she hid in the park after hours and found the keys to the cheetah's enclosure. Violent animal rights group accused the zoo of being unsafe. The victim's behavior obviously had an important role in the incident. But, but that's not what it means. Like, when when you adopt something, it's like, oh, yeah, you're supporting the zoo, and this one over here is technically yours. Like, that's pretty cute, but it doesn't mean you're supposed to climb into the cages of, like, literal feral predators. That's that's probably not a good idea. And I love the animal rights group is, like, being, being Karen squared, basically. Oh, this person did this incredibly silly thing. They literally hid after closing and stole keys and everything, basically broke inside the zoo, and it's like, oh, it wasn't safe enough. Like, fam, a zoo is supposed to be so so the animals don't break out. I mean, it's... it's <laughs> God. To all new customers, I take pride in making my sandwich. My staff and I do not rush. This concept has been working for over six years at Dante's. If you have no patience, please leave. <laughs> I need this done in three minutes. I'm also glad they're just kind of standing up for it. Like, people being in a rush isn't particularly hardcore Karen territory, but it also shows that, you know, now we want to do this food the way we want, and it's important that both parties have reasonable expectations about it, so I think it's good. I just called Carnival and let the customer service rep know that they would be losing my business if they continue to allow kids in the ship. She told me she would let John Heald know. Thanks to me, we should expecting some big change soon. I get results. Oh, all right. <laughs> Whatever whatever you say. The result added to a do not call list and do not pick up list too. The no float list, no boat list. <laughs> I get changes done. I don't use Facebook that much anymore, but if anything I know from Facebook is that if all the reactions are basically laugh emojis, you probably don't have any supporters in the comments. Isn't that right, Frosty Freddy? Oh, yes, indeed. You're such a good boy. Thank you for keeping me cool. Don't lose your cool there, Frosty Freddy. I need it for the rest of my recording, please. That was also a pun. You're free to free to say haha in the comments. You can't just take a family pet, somebody's animal, and dump him like that and then just think that's okay. Disgruntled neighbor steals family dog and dumps him in another state. What did ever the dog do? Oh my god, what? There's a disgruntled Karen that's, like, upset the dog was barking for a bit. Like, no, I'm gonna dump it in the woods somewhere. That's basically, like, a death sentence if you're unlucky. But that seems like a reasonable response. Yahoo! I mean, don't get me wrong. Neighbor dogs can be annoying if they're not raised properly, etc., etc. But but this is probably not the way to go about it. Just gonna put it out there. Road trip of a lifetime fail! Review of Yellowstone National Park, zero stars! Our dream road trip of a lifetime. Months of planning, thousands of dollars invested, 3,000 miles of driving, arriving at Yellowstone to find it closed. <gasps> Priceless. 
Ah, oh, I'm so outraged. Sorry, the worst flooding in over a hundred years messed with your vacation. Hundreds of people stranded, no power, no water, lost everything. Homes and businesses destroyed. But you couldn't see some gay sirs. Haha, <laughs> that's, that's, gay sirs. Uh, oh, that was funny. Maybe they should be upset about that instead. Ah, oh, for, we need to rename it because it's the, the gay agenda. They are spraying the gay every, it's, it's not a conspiracy. <laughs> God, the funny thing is that I keep coming up with these ridiculous things in these videos. But but when I listen to it, when I hear it back again, it's like, yeah, this is totally something I would expect to find on a subreddit like this. It's like, <laughs> I don't find things far-fetched anymore because there's so much ridiculousness. <sighs> oh my god, I'm so damaged. Hampton Roads Military Wives with Kids. That's a very specific group. Last Nybart family went to Kiki's place in Norfolk, see attached picture. As a military spouse, I asked if they give military discount. Cashier responder, we give free drinks to active duty and retired. I said, what about spouse of deployed members? Rude cashier said, man is issued a sea bag, not a spouse. Of course, my face changed and I said, I'm going to have a call to corporate. He said, go ahead, but I'm the district manager so nothing will change. If you wish, we can sit down and talk. Thankfully, my kids and father-in-laws was with me and it was a celebration for my soon-to-be 10-year-old or I would have left. I don't care about the free drink. I care that this man feels that only the service members, servers, and openly give such disrespect to military spouse. <laughs> Please share. It's good to be proud of what your partner do, but it's also such a weird thing to hop around and flex with. Like, oh yeah, hey, you, you, you know, I'm, I'm a military spouse, so you should give me free stuff. It's like, but, but you're not actually the military. What? <laughs> and that also starts me to bring in the questions like, are you actually together with them? because you genuinely want to or are you just with them for like a weird twisty getting free stuff kind of gold diggy thing it doesn't it doesn't ring that that clean to be honest you see people don't want to hear your opinion they want to hear their opinion coming out of your mouth that is so true my god i think one of the best things i learned growing up is that it's so important to be able to have discussions without trying to win an argument. Some of the absolute best discussions I've ever had with friends or colleagues or other people is when both people go in with the kind of attitude that, you know what, I don't care if I win this argument. I'm here to like listen to an opposing opinion, maybe learn something. And if both parties have that kind of understanding, you learn so much and you understand so much of the other side of the argument. Because let's be real, so much of the human condition is incredibly subjective. Not everything is going to have a clear objective answer and being able to bring a discussion to that point to understand what other perspectives might exist helps you so much not only in understanding other people but also understanding what different points can actually be made regarding a subject very good attitude for learning a lot of things sadly maybe that's not the case on like twitter or politics but you know when we are with friends and good people we can we can do that <laughs> I have no words. Some teens eating chips inside a lazy river slash pool. We told them not to do that. In response, they called me a bitch. Oh my God, look at that outrage. Society's falling apart. I mean, is there even a rule against eating chips there? They're not even making a mess. They have like a little bag. We do not serve fast food. We serve quality food as fast as we can. That is so catchy. Oh my god, I kind of I kind of want to if I ever open a fast food restaurant, I want to I want to do this or a quality a fast quality food restaurant. <sighs> yes, indeed. We only need to examine the word of God. Nowhere does it condone killing an unborn child. Pastor, actually the Bible has instructions for how to perform an abortion. Numbers here. And pray for God's female enemies to suffer miscarriages here. And God tells the Israelis to kill every child and preg a woman in the city here. As for baby murder, the Bible has songs about splattering the infants of Israel's enemies against the rocks. Here you go. God himself murders David's infant son for his infidelity. Here you go. As well as countless other babies in Genesis and Exodus. Why can't you just say you are against killing babies? Why do you have to be so BS about the Bible being against it? And maybe, you know, maybe we shouldn't take word for word a 2,000 year old book. It's like, oh la la la, smacking baby heads on rocks. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe we can just agree that, you know, some, some parts are... A little bit outdated, fam. Facebook. Oh, I already know there's gonna be gold. Let's see what Facebook has to offer today. I'm not sure it came up with this design, but clappity clap clap. Oh, look at that. It's a couple of parents protecting their kids from... Oh my god. It must be the gay agenda that's just coming down from the sky. I'm gonna be honest. The design is pretty nice, but the message is absolutely atrocious. 
And it's also very silly, because this basically suggests that, you know, there's something turning people gay and that kind of stuff. I've had an interesting theory. Let, let me know what you think about it. Uh, there, I see so many people around, you know, these kind of talking points. They're like, I, I chose to be straight. I had these gay temptations of sin when I was younger. How many of these people are just as closeted bisexuals who are in such heavy denial they will rather believe that being gay is a choice. I seriously start to believe that might be the case. Like, do we have a vastly massive, like, hidden statistical number of people who are actually bisexual, but they get swept up in these, you know, hyper-conservative mindsets, <laughs> and instead they try to make it seem like, oh no, gay is a choice, I, I could totally, like, you know, be attracted to, to any of these two people. It's like, what? <laughs> is that... Tell me, tell me I'm not crazy, right? <laughs> that's not, that's not a too crazy conspiracy, right? <laughs> is it... One star. I wouldn't recommend Blorp Cafe to anyone. We stopped in for lunch at 1.25, and they close at 2. We followed three other people in, not with us, and they were seated. A lady who may have been Jan met us at the door and told us she couldn't take anyone else because she was almost out of everything. We might have wanted something she wasn't almost out of, but we'll never know. I wonder what those other people ate. We'll never be going back. If you're open until 2, you should plan accordingly. Oh, so you had a little bit more guests that day than you expected and you ran out of stuff? Like, yeah, that's also pretty late for lunchtime, not gonna lie. Like, most most places start closing earlier than that. But also, maybe it's making a big fuss of it. You can just go to the next place over in, in that case. Like, oh, we're out of stuff. No worries. I'll go to this <laughs> place across the street. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bad. Went in the other day for a few things. A girl offers me a free sample of hand cream I needed up buying it... Up, uh, ended up maybe, buying it and got home on closer inspection and realized it's made from marijuana's plants. <gasps> Satan's leaves. We all know what hemp means. I've contacted the police, put in a formal complaint with the company and booked a doctor's appointment to see if they're still my system. Thanks a lot, not. Good job I wasn't with the kids, otherwise it would have been a trip to the A and E. I mean, I, I doubt they're selling illegal drug hand moisturizer. Um, just gonna put it out there. Absolutely vile behavior from the management. They accuse my daughter of stealing one pound lip gloss. She has no reason to steal a shoity lip gloss. My daughter has more money than these vile creatures will earn in a day. If you call staff workers vile creatures, I think you have some moral issues that you might want to get checked. As a regular customer who speaks loads of money in the shop, speaks lo- spends? Spe okay. To accuse her of this is absurdly absurd. <laughs> I love the way this is written. This is absurdly absurd. Oh, outrageously outrageous. Just because she had her phone in her hands and she put in a bag which she's allowed to do doesn't mean she stole something. And then to give shite response at the end of the day, they had one pound missing so she gets accused. I have reported them to police for interrogating her without parents present that she's under 16 and I will also have reported this for the local newspaper and the good people of Dagenham knows what scum these people really are. The place needs to be shut down ASAP and I'll do everything in my power to make that happen. Fight the evil vile uh, creatures who are just like vibing in a shop like Hey, can you can you show us you didn't snag this item? It looked a bit sus. Oh, you didn't? Cool. Have a good day. <laughs> I mean, getting accused of taking things when you haven't, it doesn't feel great. But sometimes it can also be pretty random or just a misunderstanding. Hyping it up like this, depending on the situation, of course, but from, from how this reads, I'm assuming it wasn't that bad and it seems extremely over the top. Good morning! I took our dad Cooper to your office last Friday. The office itself was clean and staff prompt and friendly. All your assistants had on a proper pronouns mask, they, them, which I felt was very unprofessional. I work in a dental office and we have to put politics aside. Mm, yes, all them pronouns. In your face labeling, your KOI pond was also full of weeds, as was the front of your office. I did a little weeding! <laughs> Wait, what? That is... that's very strange. Please hire someone to take care of your outside and help your staff be sensitive on the inside. Sensitive on the... <laughs> you know, is this real? This is the same kind of person that, that was gonna claim that, oh, being gay is political. It's like, oh, okay, wow, s sorry for existing, I guess. Gee. It's Orlando time! Is this an event or a group? I am so blown away. If you need emergency nappies at Magic Kingdom, beware that they will charge you $15 odd for a whole pack of Huggies. Literally only wanted one to tide us over. I wasn't expecting to buy a whole pack, what are they thinking? Half tempted to make a complaint to Disney as I would have been happy to buy one nappy. After spending so much money on tickets to come here, surely they could have given me a nappy? I mean, <laughs> it's a thing for sale, I guess. Um, <laughs> 
Also, I don't necessarily agree with it. I agree that some prices in theme parks are outrageous. I was in a theme park myself recently, and kind of what you have to expect is that, you know, the place is literally there as a money machine. You know, if you go into a theme park, everything inside of it is going to be more expensive. You know, if you buy a piece of candy, if you grab lunch there, if you grab a beer, it's usually going to cost a bit more than if you just went to your local pub. And that's sort of to be expected. I don't really agree with it. Uh, necessarily, but it's also kind of, you know, th th this is sort of how it works. I'm not sure making a big deal of it in this way for a nappy is, <laughs> is, is, is like worth the energy. This is Karen, the goat police. There she is. She wants to report me to the goat's owner, the guy who was feeding them with us two days ago. The guy that doesn't give a shite. <laughs> Wait, she wants to report you were feeding a goat? Oh my god, that's amazing. I'm expecting these things to start popping up about ducks. Like, Oh, you're feeding the ducks? Oh my god, I fed a duck the other day. It was beautiful. It ate out of my hand. It was so cute. You can check it out on my Twitter or Instagram. Uh, casual promotion. If you want to see me feeding ducks, there you go. That's quality content, baby. Don't you dare shop empty-handed to my 4th of July cookout with your five kids and then take to-go plates with all my barbecue. Has this actually happened? I mean, obviously that happened somewhere, but gosh darn. That is so entire. Can you imagine that? You just head into your neighbor's party and be like, Hi, I'm just here to feed my kids and just pack boxes full of all the food and just leave. You're not even there for the event. It's not even that you're bringing too many plus ones that is expected and not bringing any food. You're just there, take food for free and just leave. Dear God, you're not even socialized. This is like wrong on 15 levels. This stupid dog is almost in my way. Don't you have a backyard for a reason? Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. Slam. <laughs> The priorities. This reminds me of that post where it's like, my husband came into the room, held my hot dog's face tight, kissed it on the forehead, looked deep into the eyes and said, I love you, then left the room. I was sitting right next to the dog. And I imagine it's going to be the exact same reverse. You know, the dog comes first. That's how it works. All the puppets. Come on in and try what one Yelper described as the worst cotton collar they have ever experienced. Walk-ins, welcome. Smiley. Oh. You hear that, F Frosty Freddy? We can we can walk in there and be cool together. Mwah. You beautiful, beautiful little creature. I'm literally sitting here making friends with an ice block that I put googly eyes on. Don't show this to people out of context. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I don't I don't think it looks much better in context. Go nuts. Oh, honey, everything I say about you behind your back is true. Oh, that's the, oh. Happy Pride. So excited to celebrate with all my LGBTQIA plus friends and fans. Art by Paulina for at DC Comics. Wonder Woman is not a superhero for gays. I have decided, random Twitter user with amazing takes. Just the factual know-how of an entire Wikipedia. Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe it's time to go to the toilet because you're so full of poo. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Okay, so hardly ever post on here, especially ranting. I had a little hard day working on my yard today, so I went to Little Caesar on East 10th Street here in Jeffersonville to feed myself and then kids. I get up to the window, the teenage boy asks to take my order, proceeded to take my debit card, then bothers to tell me that it's going to be a 15 minute wait. I was not in the mood to wait. I ordered one cheese hot and ready pizza and one pepperoni so they had no none and be 15 minutes I proceeded to talk. What's with this non-existent punctuation? This is so horrible to read. Can you not think of the YouTubers when you write your dumb rants? I proceeded to talk to the manager and told her I wanted a discount on my pizza because it was not hot and ready. She told me that she was not going to do that. I proceeded to ask for her general manager number. She said you can get it off my website. Then she sat there and bothered to tell me. What do you mean bother to t Okay. Bother to tell me, never mind, gave me back my card and told me I could just go somewhere else. What kind of service is this? I will definitely not be going back there. This must be first time going there. Outrageous. Can you imagine them being slightly out of a thing and preparing it for 15 minutes? Oh my god, the world is crumbling. I am a real victim. Can you imagine being a lifeguard today with all the disrespectful kids and all the Karens out there? I was just thinking this. The pay is terrible too. My wife has the name Karen. Please apologize. Today is our 42nd anniversary. This derogatory Karen needs to stop. Happy anniversary. And no. <laughs> Warning. Attention, parents. The management of this theater discovered after booking Lightyear that there is same-sex kissing scene within the first 30 minutes of a Pixar movie. Oh. We will do all we can to fast forward through that scene, but it might not be exact. <laughs> can you imagine they just accidentally slow-mo through it just to savor the moment? We apologize for any inconvenience this late discovery of this scene causes. Ah! 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 Oh! Oh my god, my life is in shambles. You hear that, Frosty Freddy? Yes, indeed, and they are being silly. 
Dear management, I would like to bring to you a complaint. I went to the smoothie store location at around 10.30 this morning. When I got home 15 minutes later, I noticed that my regular smoothie was just like water. I visit your store three times a week. If nothing happens for me, I will not return to your store again, nor will all of my family. I tried calling your store and phone number and nobody pieced up. I called three times and nobody still answered. The woman who served me had a covering over her head with no name tag. Mysterious. Sincerely, customer's full name, customer full address. The employee name is attached. That, uh, okay. I mean, 15 minutes away. I'm not sure if you were driving or walking, but hopefully it's not that far. I would just go back to the place with the receipt, honestly. Um, that, that's probably like the more... If you actually want something done, that's probably the most straightforward way to doing it. I've had that happen a few times, too. When I buy like a smoothie or a juice or something like that, and, you know, all of a sudden you realize that, oh, like half the ingredients are missing because, you know, people are in a rush or something like that. Normally, you can just ask... <laughs> that usually fixes it. It's like, hey, I think something is missing. You're like, oh, sorry. And pff, here you go. Ah, oh, thanks. You know, it, it's easy. Usually escalating things isn't really necessary. People be warned. The toddler Karen is out and about today, throwing things on floor that were shelved inside the store, cursing out employees for not doing their job quick enough to her standards, and destroying outside this place because she wasn't kneeled down to. And yes, she is now banned. <laughs> That ought to show them that you're in the right to just casually destroy private property. <laughs> Heck yeah. My ex-girlfriend from high school, class of 1997. For the past 20 years, she will drop into my social every so often for some Karen-esque cringy bragging. So here's a little picture of a nice little pool slidey thing. Spoil them! That's why we have them! Also, I see your inflatable and race you a 50k in grand pool and hot tub for my teenagers. <laughs> I see you have this little silly summer picture of like a blow-up castle we're playing in. But, but, I I, I need to flex! Here's the harsh truth. I don't think anyone with an actual happy and fulfilled life feels the need to, like, obsessively send flex messages to their ex from 20 years ago. That is very strange to me. Nothing says happy and complete life like bragging on Facebook to your ex from 20 years ago. Heck yeah. So here we got a little menu. The original Karen. Toasted wheat, PBJ, bowl, nah, the American cheese mayo cannot be modified, Karen. <laughs> Is that why? Because yet Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Oh, huge shout out to Tampa Bay Devil Ray pitcher Jason Adam for not wearing the pride flag in his uniform. Stand up against this Vogue movement. Oh, oh, it's so cringe, isn't it? Something I've realized is that for, for older generations sometimes, it can be difficult to understand, like, oh, why why is this such a big deal? Like, why do we have pride parades? Why, why does that thing exist? It seems a bit, you know, much, doesn't it? Well, the thing is that you want to show solidarity because there are still people out there who will heavily discriminate, both in the workplace, in families, even with violence. Think of it very much as someone getting bullied in a schoolyard. Uh, and if someone asks you, hey, should we step in, you know, against the bully to make sure this kid isn't having a horrible time? And then you say, what? No, why are you asking me to do that? I am not a bully. Why are you lumping in me in with the bully? It's like, no, no, we, we should just not endorse horrible behavior. If we actually make it the norm that terrible behavior isn't accepted, and uh, th then it very much goes away, at least for the most part. This is very silly, though. I'm not sure why they're so insecure about it. I purchased my house recently, six months, and I'm concerned that housing prices will drop. When they do, who do I contact to get my principal lowered? What? Will the realtor or the bank give me the refund on the difference? Sorry, but it doesn't work that way, and no one will lower your principal. But why not? If my house goes down, should I be refunded for the difference? <laughs> Yeah, if you if you buy a car and it, you know, loses value over time because it's an older and older car and it's more and more used, yeah, the car company is going to pay it back until you have all the money you spent on the car back in the first place and then you can buy a new car. That's how life works. Yes. I mean, obviously, the housing market is a bit more like wajahoo than, than just a car decreasing in value, but still, it's pretty much the same thing. The next door app is a haven for racist Karens peeking through their blinds and clutching their pearls. My husband said there was a band of 200, not the G word, but close, all coming in at once to NM, and we will be overrun with them. Yeah, this is such a pearl clutch moment. Oh my god. <laughs> I just see it in front of me like... <gasps> Christians against Miss Marvel. Oh, we're really picking the important fights here, aren't we? About. Miss Marvel might be the biggest slap in the face for conservative Christians to date. Disney has decided that the face of this franchise should be not Carol Danvers, but should instead be a gay Muslim. Oh! Oh my god, oh, oh! No more straight Christian characters from Marvel. There are a lot of straight, I mean, Christian, I'm not sure about that, I don't talk so much about the religion, but, like, 
Most of the characters are. Those days are over. Please join us and we let Disney know that we will not be cancelled. What do you mean? This is not cancellation. This is this is just you throwing a fit that not, that 100% of the characters don't represent you as a carbon copy. Like that That's not the same thing. Like, oh, we have this dozens and dozens of characters that very well represent you. And then we have this one character that doesn't. Oh, what an outrage. <laughs> It is very silly. You hear that, Frosty Freddy? I oh, you agree with your little molten brain. Kaya Motus. Experience. Karen's <laughs> from a different world. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. We lived in this place for 36 years and lived quietly, unfortunately. That's over now. Children playing basketball? What? Oh, it's basically a concert outside my window. My butt is trembling from the noise. Be on the lookout. Just had a Muslim descent woman in a gray Nissan drive by our home and take pictures of it once in each direction. Thanks, Karen. I'll alert the media. Why don't you do that? <laughs> what is this conspiratorial stuff? Oh my god. I mean, one thing to keep an eye out for, but this is for kind of different particular instances. For example, in Sweden, we had uh, a wave of criminal gangs who would, for example, send out a scout car that would look where there would be potential valuables. For example, in a garage, if there were a motorcycle or something like that. After that, there's a break-in team, essentially, that goes pick the stuff up and just locks it in, like, a random parking lot somewhere. They wait a few days, so police aren't tracking it, and once they know it's clear, they have a truck that goes around, picks up these stolen, stolen goods, basically, and ship it across sea. Um, so that's like something to look out for, I suppose, if someone is acting really suspicious and trying to like log your valuables or whatever. But it's also kind of in a distinctly different area. I don't think that's too common in like a very tightly packed suburban area, for example. This is more of a like countryside thing. As far as I know, FYI, it's illegal to videotape the movie. It's called pirating. We had a 10 year old boy doing just that last night. Mother wasn't cooperative with my employee. If anyone is caught filming the movie here, the cops will be called. Inform your children before they come. I mean, <laughs> I just imagine the scene the parent is, is pulling. Just just put the phone down. It's easy. Male Karen believes it is right to drive off with the Walmart electric cart. Berates employee for trying to stop him. Why, why, you, you can't walk away with the regular carts. Why would you? Why do you think you're able, like, allowed to walk away with the most expensive cart? That's so wild. Sandy Hook conspiracy theorist says she's proud to harass families of children who were lost in tragic events. Oh my... Holy crap, that is so insane. I've seen some of that kind of stuff pop up, where it's like, oh, this is obviously part of a bigger conspiracy because, you know, they want to push this agenda, so this is just a setup and that kind of stuff. And then they harass the families because they genuinely believe they're part of, like, this big spider web of intricate political movements or something. It's so intense. It's wild. Karen's conviction. Oh, it's in Pokemon now. That's a sick looking car, though. I'll probably do another card opening stream uh, on Twitch soon. Check it out in the link d in below, baby. Pokemon. Woo! Pasta, Angelo, por modo, pasta, Gabrielli, pizza, bolognese, carbonara, bella, linda, Karen. Oh, ba, 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 ba. I'm basically fluent in Italian. Don't shame me, please. Let's see. Kate, K Karen. She believed she could, so she did. <laughs> I know it's supposed to be this silly little inspirational thing, but oh my god. Be your own kind of beautiful. I mean, that's that's pretty sweet for the Kate one, right? Best write your own story. Why is the Karen specifically so fitting? It's wild. A Karen, speaker manager, rage, tone. Don't use that tone with me. Bring me the manager. This is basically like just a speech replacer. Maybe maybe this can be used for stream. Is this like a Go XLR? <laughs> Karen, one star. This setback direction did not take me to the car park. I was hour early from my appointment, ended up being late, drove around around and could not find ending up paying for it in on a park but very disappointed. Woo! Social distancing can be applied to letters too, believe it or not. Grandparent alienation is psychological and emotional abuse. This sounds like uh, a nice family argument. Let's get it into this. Limiting grandparents' access to children times that suit only the parents' emotional blackmailing. Bullying the grandparents into making a succession plan that the parents want to threaten they won't see their children again so they don't agree. How does alienation affect grandparents? I can't leave grandparents isolated, anxious, depressed, angry, and frustrated. In effect, they are grieving for the living. This can be called ambiguous was grief. Or basically just, I'm being more entitled to someone's kids than them themselves. You're not more entitled to someone's kids than their own parents. What are you talking about? 
Grandparents can in turn become isolated from their peers as they retreat from conversations about their friends' grandchildren, or indeed are not included by friends they know it's upsetting they talk about their positive relationships. If results in a face-to-face -face confrontation, they can be physically abused. They feel forced into making certain decisions to and it just goes on. Here's the thing. Spending time with your old family members is incredibly important if you have relations with them. It is incredibly easy. I've, I've seen that myself when people grow older and, you know, friends pass away and uh, there aren't that many activities or maybe you don't have energy to, like, go out and do things by yourself. It's important to show your older generation and it creates a lot of value within a family too. Like, cross-generational um, relations within a family are, are incredibly wholesome and valuable and sweet uh, when they work. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. And I think we would all want that as well when we grow old, for our younger parts of our family to care about us and make sure we aren't alone. So, so that's something very important that, that I think is extremely valuable. Um, of course, that doesn't mean that you're more entitled to, <laughs> to, to your own kids' kids than they are themselves. Like, cease. But, <laughs> God. So here's a place that made like really nice little infographs from their very, very worst ratings. Let's take a look, shall we? One star, not Italian at all, yay! <laughs> One star, fish was smaller than the size of my palm and here is the fish that is like the size of an average male. One star, it was a bit awkward, everyone seemed to know each other and they're doing the cases. <gasps> Woo! One star, the host had an attitude. <laughs> God, I love this. I want to go to this place just for the reviews. This is absolutely amazing. Small coffee, $5. Small coffee, please, $3. Hello, one small coffee, please, $1.75. I am not saying please to someone below me. Judging by this comment, there is literally nobody below you. <laughs> Oh, not even Facebook is on your side now, Karen. Well, ladies, lasses, and louses, I do hope you sincerely enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it. You beautiful bean, have an amazing rest of your day because you deserve it, and I will see you in the very near future. And Frosty Freddy says, uh, says, says hello. Mwah. Take care.